okay uh, in today's presentations i am uh, presenting the ashram urban areas rent control act 1972 mm. here at first uh, we have to know the main objects of this act mm. here number one objects <coughs> Uh, to fix fair rent in urban areas yeah number one ambitions of this act is to fix the fair rent hmm. is to fix the fair rent hmm. in the urban areas here fair rent means hmm, which is a uh, reasonable and which is equitable hmm. and uh, under this egg it must be based on the standard range fixation of the standard range hmm. if the range hmm, whatever agreed between the tenant and the landlord it must be in compliance with the standard range hmm. that is then only it can be considered as the fair rent hmm. according to this act. Hmm. Here, number two ambitions hmm. it, uh, to give protection to urban house tenants against arbitrary ejectments by landlords. Here. Uh, number two ambitions to give protection to the urban house tenants from the arbitrary hmm, ejection by the landlords that is here the landlord cannot easily eject the urban house tenants now hmm. for this the landlord has to comply the procedure of these provisions and uh, it must be hmm, with the decree of the competent civil court at first he has to approve he has to file the ejection suit hmm, before the competent civil court hmm, based on some reasonable grounds hmm, that is then only the landlord can eject the urban house tenant. Hmm. That is the basic to main objects of this the Asham Urban Areas Rent Control Act 1972. Here now in this egg also hmm, at first we have to clarify. Hmm, Distinctions with the another egg, whatever we have been discussed at the previous presentations, that is the Asham Non Agricultural Urban Areas Tenancy Act 1955. Hmm. If we comparatively study between these two acts, then the basic concept will be easily understood hmm. here uh, now the here the asham urban areas red country like 1972 hmm. it doesn't confer specific land rights on tenants hmm. here it deals with tenants of house uh, which includes the land on which the house stands and uh, each compound laid out by the landlord. Here, this uh, Asham Urban Areas Rent Control Act it doesn't uh, confer land rights to the urban house tenants. Hmm. It just 
deals about the hostiness mm. to the uh, tenants, mm. whatever let out by the landlord it is. Mm. Hostiness and its compound, its uh, vicinity, its compound, its premises, mm. it only includes about them. Mm. Here, but the right of tenants of urban lands are deal with in another uh, legislation, namely the Asian Non Agricultural Urban Areas, Kiritsek 1955. Mm. That act deals with the uh, tenants of lands which have been taken on lease from landlords. Mm. Here, the Asham non agricultural urban areas, mm. Tenancy Act 1955, it uh, deals about the rent of the lands mm. which is laid out or occupied for residential or for business purposes by the tenants. Mm. Here, and uh, in the non agricultural urban area tenancy in 1955, mm, the house is built and uh, owned by the tenant. Here, we have to remember about this. In the non agricultural urban area tenancy in 1955, here, the house is built and uh, owned by the tenant mm. but in the urban areas rent control act 1972 mm. the house is uh, built and uh, owned by the landlord mm. it is only let out on hire to house to the house tenant yeah but in case of the urban areas rent control act here the house is already built by the landlord just it is just it is a higher to the tenants for the occupation hmm. that is just a uh, tenant has to remain with the agreement by the landlord hmm. here House is already made by the landlord in case of the Asha urban areas rent control air. Mm. That is the basic distinctions between the whatever we have been discussed in the previous presentations and uh, today's presentations. The Asha urban areas rent control act 1972. Mm. Here, now the applications of the air. Mm. Here, the act applies to all urban areas in Asham. Mm. What about the urban areas mm. in Asham within these areas? Mm. This act will be applicable. Here, urban areas, here, it will be notified by the municipal authority. Mm. And now, this urban areas concept the revenue thousand also included mm. in this uh, revenue thousand also the provisions of this asham urban areas rent control act 1972 will be applicable mm. in case of tenancy between the uh, tenant and the landlord mm. here besides urban areas the state governments may by notifications apply it to revenue townlands also. Mm. Here, the new act doesn't apply to premises belonging to central governments mm. or to any tenancy created by central governments, grants respect of premises taken on lease or requisition by central government. Mm. And what about the premises under the central government and if it is taken under the requisition by the central government in these cases this tenancy 
this tenancy provisions will not be applicable. Hmm. It is applicable only whatever the municipality they have been notified that these areas come under the uh, urban areas and if the Assam Land and Revenue Regulations and the Assam Land and Revenue Regulation Act and the Assam Land and Revenue Reassessment Act if this Act have been notified that these areas will come under the revenue town lands mm. in these areas only the provisions of the urban areas rent control act 1972 will be applicable mm. you have to remember about this mm. here now the definitions and interpretation close mm. here at first the urban area you have to know about this here urban area has been defined as any area hmm, included in a municipality or a town committee hmm. the urban area is different from revenue town lands hmm. here the urban area is created under the municipal act hmm. whatever i have already mentioned whereas the revenue town lands hmm, created under the Asham Land and Revenue Regulations and the Asham Land Revenue Reassessment Act. Hmm. That is, there is the interpretation clause and definition clause of the urban area. Hmm. Here, we got the two different concepts, urban area and the revenue town land. Hmm. That is. And the next definition clues here the house, which house are included under these provisions. Here, now the house means any building, hmm, a hut or shed, led or to be led separately for residential purpose and includes garden, ground, and uh, out house appurtenant to it mm. and also any furniture supplied by the landlord that is yeah this concept comes under the uh, house mm. that is under this concept this tenancy law will be regulated mm. and the now the concept of the standard rents here The most important based on this uh, egg mm, under the Asham Urban Areas Rent Control Act 1972, mm, it is the standard rent. Mm, you have to know about the standard rent. Based on this standard rent, the total egg is defense. Mm, that is here. Now, the standard rent, it means uh, the annual rent. Mm calculated uh, at the rate of seven half percent mm, of the total estimated cost uh, of construction of a house at the market value of the land mm, on which the house stands uh, together with the total municipal tax mm, at the urban immobile property tax mm, yeah this standard rent will be fixed based on mm, at first the seven half percent of mm, the total estimated cost of construction of house mm, and the market value of the land on which the house stands and together with Mm. the total munis municipal tax and uh, the urban immobile property tax mm. based on this the calculations will be done mm. at first we have to find out the annual rent mm. and after that monthly rent 
is one twelfth of this annual range. Hmm. After uh, finding out the annual range, hmm, Monday range is one twelfth of this annual range. Hmm. Here, now the uh, fair range, hmm. section 3, subsection 1, it uh, provides about the fair range, what is called the fair range. Hmm. Here, the standard range is the fair range, hmm. and uh, no landlord is entitled to search hmm. a range a higher than the distant rent. Hmm. Subject to these limits, the rent agreed to be twenty forties would be fair so long as it not fixed by the proper authority. Hmm. Here the concept of a fair rent it means whatever compliance with the standard rent. Hmm. Based on the standard range, whatever we have already got, seven and a half percent hmm, of the uh, constructions of the house hmm, on which the house stands together with the municipal tax, hmm, together with the immobile property tax, hmm, that is, based on this formula, this uh, what about the rent calculated mm. it comes under the concept of the fair rent mm. and uh, what about the agreements between the tenant and the landlord mm. if the authority proper authority is not decided yet mm. in these cases it must be reasonable and it must be equitable fair rent mm. that is now Enhancements of the standard standard range. Hmm. Enhancements of the standard range. Here, uh, in enhancements of the standard range, here, two limits, two limitations, to such and enhancements must be complied with. Hmm. Number one. Here, the enhancements of the standard range should not be exceed 50 percent of the preceding standard range hmm. whatever already decided hmm, by the proper authority standard range hmm. now subsequently if uh, the fixation of st standard range is necessary then it cannot exceed the 50 percent hmm, of uh, Preceding standard range, hmm. that is, here, and it must be, and uh, it can be, it cannot be revised within the five years. Hmm. Here, only after the expiry of the five years of the fixation of the preceding standard range, hmm. then only subsequent standard range can be fixation by the proper authority hmm. five years must be left that is after the expiry of the five years hmm, of the determinations of the preceding uh, standard range then only after the expiry of the five years hmm, from that day the standard rate can be subsequently determined by the proper authority. Hmm. Here, these two limitations we have to be remembered. At first, it cannot exceed the fifty percent hmm, of the pre previous uh, preceding uh, standard range, and five years must be left hmm, from that day. That is, and 
Now the dispute as to rents regarding the rents, if the dispute arises between the tenant and the landlord, then what to do? Mm. Here, in these cases, dispute as to rent shall be determined by the competent civil court. Mm. Here, on application made by either the landlord or the tenant, the court shall issue notice on both the parties and after making necessary inquiry uh, determines the rent according to the principles mentioned above mm. which shall be binding on body parties here on application of the landlord and the tenants here the competent civil court they will notice to body parties mm. and uh, after hearing the objections the proper authority they will they will determine the fair rent mm. that is now the protections against arbitrary ejections mm. protections against arbitrary ejections it is provided under section 5 of this Assam urban areas rent control act yeah this is most important under this act. Mm. Here, now the here number one conditions it given states. Mm. Number one grounds here. What the tenants contravenes the provisions of the clauses M O P of section 108 of the transfer of property act mm. according to this clauses the lessee is bound to keep the land in as good a condition as it was when he took possession mm. he must not use the property for a purpose other than the debt for which it was leased mm. and he must not erect formal structure without lesser consent yeah the tenants that is the lessee mm. he must have to comply the some conditions that is whatever they have agreed whatever they have made the covenants that is the enjoyment of this property here and it is uh, expressly given in section 108 of the transfer of property act 1882 hmm. regarding the position of the leasehold leasehold property hmm. it must be keep in the good conditions hmm. and the a landlord must be given reasonable opportunity to inspect the property mm. in periodically and the permanent structure cannot be erected by the tenants without the prior permissions from the landlord mm. this is given under uh, clauses m o p of section 108 108 of the transfer of property act 1882 number on conditions if these conditions doesn't comply with by the tenant then he can be ejected by the landlord with the proper authority hmm. by obtaining the decree from the civil court ah. you have to remember about this hmm. here number two conditions where the tenant is guilty of causing nuisance or annoyance to neighbors yeah number two conditions if the tenant disturb the neighbors mm. if he causes annoyance or disturbance mm. then under these conditions he can be ejected by the landlord and where the house is bona fide required by the landlord for repair or rebuilding 
or for occupation of himself uh, or of any persons for whose benefit the house is held hmm, or of any other causes accepted by the court hmm. and if the landlord uh, has recorded land for some bona fide reasons that is for himself and if the court is satisfied this bona fide reasons recorded by the landlord for himself hmm, under this condition also and next where the tenants sublets or transfers the house or its part without the written permissions of the landlord hmm. then if the tenant sublets or transfer this uh, house without the prior permissions from the landlord hmm. and what the tenant has not fed the rent lawfully due within 14 days of its falling due hmm. and if the landlord hmm, if the tenant has not been fed the rent hmm, within the 14 days of its falling due after the due date if the tenant is not uh, fed the rent within the 14 days of its falling due hmm. in this condition also and what the tenant has built acquired or been allotted a suitable residence hmm. now last condition grounds if the tenant uh, has built uh, acquired or been allotted a suitable residence hmm. then under this condition also the landlord, uh, the landlord has right to eject the tenant that is hmm. if tenant has already built house himself he has already accommodation himself or if the landlord has met uh, some suitable conditions hmm, or allotted to a suitable uh, residence hmm, in alternative to this house which uh, have been occupying at that moment hmm. in these conditions here the landlord has the right to eject the tenant that is uh, here now the deposit of branch in court deposit of branch in court section 5 subsection 4 under which conditions the tenant has the right to deposit the rent in the court here it provides that if the landlord refuses to accept the lawful rent offered by the tenant hmm. the tenant may within the 40 days within 14 one four within 14 days of its uh, becoming due deposit it uh, with the civil court hmm. together with the process fee for a service of notice on the landlord and uh, thereafter he shall not be treated as a defaulter yeah if the landlord uh, refuses to accept the local rents offered for the tenant then under these conditions the tenant has the right to deposit uh, this rent in the court mm. uh, and the process fee of the court must also be deposited by the tenant mm. after that the, the, the court will give notice to the landlord mm. here if the tenant is deposited in such a manner then the tenant will not be considered as the defaulter mm. the tenant cannot be considered as the defaulter if the tenant is uh, complied with such procedure mm. here the court shall then uh, shove a notice on the landlord to withdraw the deposit and pay him the rent 
on its application yeah decode will notice uh, to the landlord hmm. and the landlord uh, can withdraw this amount from the code by making applications hmm. that is now the maintenance and refuse here hmm. maintenance and refuse this is the most important provisions under this act here the landlord shall keep the house uh, wine proof and waterproof hmm. and carry out other refuse including white washing and uh, recoloring hmm. which is bound to make by law hmm. country or custom and maintain the existing essential supplies and services for example the sanitary arrangements hmm. water supply elect electricity supply or drainage service it is provided under section 6 eh? this section 6 provides uh, some obligations to the landlords it is he must have to keep the house hmm. With the maintenance, with the refuse, it must be white proof. It must be white proof. It must be waterproof. Mm. And some essential services, it must be provided by the uh, landlord to the tenant regarding this leasehold house. Mm. Here, uh, first obligations duties obligations of landlord hmm. i am repeating again here the landlord is bound to keep white proof and uh, waterproof the house which is in occupation of a tenant that is the first duties and obligation and secondly the landlord is required to carry out other refuse which he is bound to make by law a contract or custom the word refer however included a annual white washing and recoloring and if the wall if the color is damaged then it must be the refers by the landlord uh, recoloring must be done by the landlord hmm. and the white washing Needed cleans of the house, it must be done by the landlord. And thirdly, the landlord is required to maintain the existing essential supplies and services such as sanitary arrangements, hmm, water supply, supply of electricity, uh, or drainage service in respect of the house. This uh, essential supplies and services must be provided by the landlord to the tenant hmm. that is here and the next uh, refers etc by tenants and re recovery of course now if the refers is done at the cost of the tenants then he can recover from the landlord hmm. that is here if the landlord fails to carry out refuse and maintenance as uh, whatever we have already mentioned the provisions and conditions uh, the tenants may apply to the court hmm. and uh, the court may direct the landlord to affair and show cause yeah whatever the duties and obligations it is mandated by this uh, egg mm. yeah if the landlord doesn't comply with then after the filing of the tenant in the civil court the competent civil court they will give notice to the landlord to show cause mm. And uh, in some extent, 
if the landlord refuses to repair and maintenance of this house, then the tenant, if he done this repairs with his own cost, then he can recover this maintenance cost from the landlord. Hmm. Here, up to this, we have clearly discussed hmm, the provisions of the Asham Urban Areas Rent Control Act 1972. Hmm. Here, at first, we have discussed the basic objects, two objects, and after the distinction between the uh, Asham Urban Areas Rent Control Act 1972 and the Asham Non Agricultural Urban Areas Tenancy Act 1955. After that, uh, we have uh, discussed the application of this act and the definitions of uh, interpretation clause about the urban areas, house, about the concept of the standard rights and the protections from ejections by the landlord. Hmm. And uh, we have discussed about the obligations and duties of the landlord towards the tenant hmm. and the limitations of the enhancement of rent hmm. I think uh, we have got a clear concept regarding the provisions of this air hmm. okay that's all